Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is George Slackhack and one of my favorite things to do is flying drones. My new favorite drone is a DJI Air 2S. It can fly basic and some advanced operations as defined in the Canadian aviation regulations. You might be watching this from the United States, from Europe, Britain, Australia or any other place. So some of the information presented here won't apply to you but you might still find it interesting. We have two levels of pilot's license for drones, or R-Pass, as they're called in aviation gibberish. Hmm, terminology. The basic license allows you to fly outside controlled airspace and at least 30 meters away from bystanders. <laughs> the advanced license allows you to fly in controlled airspace with approval from NAV Canada and either between 5 and 30 meters away from bystanders or even over people, which is specified in a list of approved drone models. When it comes to commercial flying, you can absolutely do that with the basic license. So why not just happily stick to that? Who wants to fly in controlled airspace anyways? Perfect recipe for disaster, isn't it? Why risk getting close to manned aircraft at all? Well, there's a lot more controlled airspace around us than you might think. What would you do if a client wanted some aerial shots of a house or some footage of their landscaping operation, but it happens to be close to an airport? What are the odds, you might ask? Believe it or not, I have already two potential clients where this is the case. The advanced license would mean the difference between being able to do it or not. So what does it actually involve? First, there is an online test to pass with 50 multiple choice question and a time limit of one hour. The passing grade is 80% correct answers. Next, there is a flight review to pass. It's kind of like a driving test. Besides showing you can fly the drone, you also have to have written procedures like a flight plan and checklists that cover all the important aspects of safe drone operation. When I first heard all that, I was ready to give up. Why not just stick to the mini drones? They're getting better and better anyways, so why bother with a big drone at all? It's simple. Bigger drones can carry better cameras and even other payloads. They're also much more stable in the wind. At this point, I'm only working toward the advanced license, but it's already somewhat rewarding as terminology that really sounded like gibberish now becomes familiar and required procedures are starting to make sense. Thankfully, there are plenty of ways for drone pilots to identify controlled airspace. Anyone flying a DJI drone already has one built into their drone. While this seems like a great way to keep amateurs out of trouble, it also adds another complication for those who have to fly in controlled airspace for commercial purposes. There are various levels of locks on your DJI Fly app, some of which can be released by accepting full responsibility for your flight right on the app, while others require documentation submitted online. I haven't had that experience yet, but I will share it with you as soon as I go through that. And that alone should be a reason for you to subscribe. Yeah. Another great way of knowing exactly where controlled airspace is located is the Drone Pilot Canada app. The various levels of controlled areas are shaded in red, orange and yellow. A simple tap on the map reveals what those areas are, who can and cannot fly there and how to get permission. Let's use the Edmonton International Airport as an example. First, let's click on the larger circle. A note pops up that identifies this area as Class C controlled airspace. It's clearly a no-fly zone for basic pilots. If you have to fly in this area, you could get away with using your sub 250 gram drone or get the advanced license first. It further states that even advanced pilots must have an approved NAV Canada RPAS flight authorization request. This sounds complicated at first, but it is something to get used to, so I did some digging. But first, let's just step into the really red circle. 
Let's assume we want to take aerial photos for someone in this queue. The number of notices just went from one to four. Two of them refer to DJI drones, their warnings and locked zones, while the other two are legal requirements. The restriction for basic pilots obviously remains the same. For advanced pilots, it's got different wording. One says to secure a NAV Canada flight authorization. The other one says that you must have an approved NAV Canada flight authorization request. I fail to see the difference here, but if you are an advanced licensed pilot, you might have better insights and I would appreciate your comment. When I asked Don Joyce, who was involved in creating this app and is very well informed, he answered that the keep out zones are generally a needless complication and that the most important thing is to get permission via the NAV Canada drone app and that the lower the altitude of your planned flight, the better. So for advanced operations and controlled airspace, you need another app. I found it on a website. It says, at NAV Canada, we help ensure the safety of Canada's skies. It is important for all pilots, including drone operators, to operate safely in Canadian airspace. You must understand the regulations and take appropriate safety precautions before taking flight. This includes requesting NAV Canada authorization to fly your drone or air pass in controlled airspace. You can set up an account and download the app. It's a bit of a pain to navigate for the first time, but once you click on a few things which are barely visible at the bottom, you can enter your name and information including level of license, your drone and its specs, and finally you can start planning operations. When I first tried that, it didn't work. That was because you have to enter your drone registration and pilot license on the website via computer. Once you got all that in there, you're all set. There's a map showing all the restrictions, similar to the Drone Pilot Canada app. You can tap on areas for your planned flight. My first one was an island in the river where I like to go fly with my drone. At first it'll say not allowed, because you must select a drone. Once you do, this field turns green and you're good to go. Please note that the default altitude for your flight will be 25 meters. In the river valley that's awful low and could mean crashing into a tree. You can adjust this by tapping on the field which will bring up a slider. Up to 120 meters it'll still say allowed unless there is some kind of restriction in effect. Slide it too high and it'll say not allowed. Remember what Don Joyce said about the altitude? Next you click on plan operations and a very simple flight plan will be created. Let's try the airport area again. Of course we get back the red field with the dreaded not allowed notice. Let's click on that and see what comes up. Here's a page with one negative, six disclaimers and three positive. Let's see what it all means. As expected, we're in the control zone of a controlled aerodrome. I'm assuming it wouldn't be red if I had the advanced license. The six disclaimers would most certainly still be there. I won't read through them here, but they basically contain written procedures for when something goes wrong, as well as what mandatory checks to perform before taking off. This is useful stuff and it should be part of a checklist for such an operation. At the bottom, there are three positives. They refer to some basic rules that apply to all flights, like weight and registration requirements of the drone, the maximum altitude allowed, and to fly within visual line of sight. It's irrelevant here though, except for information purposes, as the flight cannot go ahead anyways. I'm assuming that with an advanced license, you'd simply go through the steps of planning, saving, and publishing the operation, and it would be good to go. If not, it would give further instructions. Again, I'd like any advanced operators to comment on this and perhaps correct me. A much more detailed flight plan can be generated on the Drone Pilot Canada app. While it's a requirement to have a flight plan and record along with written procedures for what to do if something goes wrong, once you're flying advanced operations, using both apps all the time would mean a lot of extra work before takeoff. 
I've gone through a pre-flight checklist in one of my videos and it's definitely useful. Checklists are memory aids designed to prevent us from skipping crucial requirements and potentially putting people at risk. They're taking the guesswork out of compliance. What I have a problem with is what app to use going forward, since using both all the time would seem like overkill for basic operations. But the NAV Canada app is the only one that lets you publish your flight plan and get authorization from, well, an authority. I will probably use the Drone Pilot Canada app for basic operations and reserve the NAV Canada app for the advanced ones, except for practice. The first one costs a fee, but it's well worth it for the load of information it contains. As a minimum requirement for keeping flight records, I think the NAV Canada app makes life easy. So I'll have to get back to you on which one I actually end up using on a regular base going forward. Flying safety is important, but using both apps all the time seems overwhelming and in some regards overlapping. So what do you think and how does it compare to the requirements in your country? Are we Canadians overly regulated? Do you keep flight records and how do you generate them? Is a good old fashioned notebook the way to go? Sometimes I think so, but then it would add yet another layer of stuff to do. Leave me your comments and check out some of my other videos. You might find them informative or maybe at least entertaining. <laughs>